What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. We have officially made it to our first ever offseason in the SFL series. I don't know about you guys, but I had a blast, an absolute blast in season number one. Yeah, I mean, it helps that uh, my team, the Thunderbirds, won the Super Bowl, right? And shout out to all the subscribers on the T-Birds. But regardless of who won, what the records were, just the interaction from you guys. And, you know, I started the SFL series. I didn't know if it would blow up into anything major or if it would just be like a little side series. But we are up to with one season in the books. We're up to 46 subscribers in the SFL. We got an official Discord. Discord link down below in the subscription. Join it. If you have Discord, it just makes things so much more fun and so much more interactive. And of course, if you would like to join the SFL and add to that subscriber count of 46 in the league, I will pin a comment down below with all the credentials that you need. This is the perfect time to do it because we got injuries off for season number two. We got progressive fatigue off. We had so many injuries. <laughs> it's a learning curve, right? But so many injuries in season number one. And uh, if you would like to join, now's the time to do it. But the big question today, where are all the subscriber players going to end up and will they hit free agency? I have a sneaky suspicion that they will. As we're about to find out, we got to re-sign some of our own here. But the reason why I think that a lot of them are going to hit free agency is because when I go in and create a player, I just take like some random 60 overall guy, uh, you know, and create and change that to your player. So a lot of those guys are on one year, just little dinky one year deals. So we got to we got to resign all of our subscribers here. We got Tubby McDouble. We got Jax Vaden. We got Mike Oxmall. We got Jay Monstro, Silas Vaden. And of course, we got our punter somewhere here as well. Uh, Jack Mavros, where is he at there? So literally every subscriber needs a new deal. Now, we'll start things off with Mr. Tubby here. Now, if any of these players don't sign, at least for the Thunderbirds, I will definitely try to get them in free agency. We got a ton of cap room to work with. 80 mil. Tubby wants to be here. He likes the big market. He likes that we have a franchise quarterback in Jordan Love. And he is looking to get paid in the shade. Expected value, four years, 37 million. Now, I'm not really going to play with fire too much. Don't want to get burned. Um, I'll give him pretty much what he wants. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, maybe I'll even overpay him just a little bit just to help ensure that we lock him in. And Tubby's at 85 overall. He's definitely earned it. Let's see if he will accept a four-year, $38.8 million deal. That is the question. Will Tubby sign? He will. So welcome to the squad again. Looking forward to having those McDoubles raining on down the screen when Tubby scores those touchdowns. Now, Jax Vaden and Mike Oxmall do not want to be here. What's up, guys? You don't want to be on the Thunderbirds? Come on now. I thought that, I thought we were family here. You know, we... we blood sweat and tears we went through war this last season we went to the freaking mountaintop and we saw what was at the top and it was glor okay enough of that i know it's just the computer but uh Jax is looking for a five-year deal he and he really wants to get paid i mean he was he joined the uh joined the sfl towards the end but he played really good for us and he's looking to get we would probably have to overpay for him which again it's a, a, all i care about really is keeping the subscribers on our team um Jax is young he's good he's star dev just like all the other subscribers that i add so will he do a five-year 52 million dollar deal he should but Jax wants to play for a new team next year okay gonna have to keep our eyes on Jax. we'll look for him in the free agent pool and hopefully i mean regardless i'm gonna get him back on the team but Hopefully, he'll sign with us in the uh, the natural free agent signing period. Mike Oxmall also doesn't want to be here. Don't know why. He says the scheme fits no good. I mean, I guess it's because our coach has a 0% career win percentage because it doesn't matter. I Every time I leave the team to go, you know, add somebody else to a new team or something like that, I always have to redo the coach. So whatever. It doesn't matter. But Mike's not looking for as much, so I'm a little more comfortable overpaying him we'll go up expected values three years 16 million we'll go uh we will go four or i'm sorry four years yeah we'll go four years four years 27 million will mike accept that boom mike oxmall back on the team so that's good good to have him locked up and now 
Our D tackles don't want to be here either. So, hey, we just won a freaking Super Bowl, man. Come on. Who does, who wouldn't want to play with the Thunderbirds? I mean, seriously. It's about this scheme fit and the income tax and the warm weather. Hey, put a freaking put a freaking mink coat on, uh, you know, to stay to stay warm once I give you all this money, right? That'll that'll keep you happy. But Jay Monstro, our defensive tackles are good. So, of course, we're going to have to overpay for Jay as well. Uh he wants 2 years 24 I mean, he's young. Why don't we just go three years, $42 million? See if we can get Jay. All right. Jay is here to stay in the Thunderbirds team. He will play. Silas Vaden next up on the docket. What's up with these? Uh, he doesn't like the scheme fit either. I mean, I would say it worked pretty well for us, right? I mean, we got a Smalls trophy. Not calling it the Lombardi, calling it the Smalls trophy. But Silas is looking to secure the bag. He wants three years, 43 Point four. So we'll go ahead and make the uh, bonus 8 mil and the salary 8 mil as well. Three years, 48, or maybe we could even do probably four years. Like I said, he's young enough. We'll, we'll keep it on three years. Three years, $48 million. Will Silas stay? Fuck yeah! Silas will. I knew that you were true, brother. Now you gotta talk to your brother Jax, right? And uh and get him on board with what we going what we got going on here on the T-Birds. And gotta bring back our punter, of course, Jack Mavros. He does wanna be here because he ja uh, Jack knows what's up. His main motivation is a repeat Super Bowl victory for the Thunderbirds. That's what it should all be about right there. So Jax knows what is really, really good. And I mean, we'll just, you know, put him on a four-year, $14 million deal with the interest. Oh, he's gonna test free agency? Oh man, I thought I could get away with, uh, with you know, uh, underpaying a little bit. I'm sorry, Jack. I tried to shortchange you. It's okay. We'll get him back in free agency. And you know what? Let me look at the franchise tag for Jacks. It would be one year, twenty million dollars. I mean, that would eat up. Yeah, I should. I, I think I'll be able to get him in free agency. I don't really want to. Our cap room kind of dwindled. That's why I'm not going to bring back Bobby Wagner. Not going to bring back Ricky Seals Jones. Um, I mean, worst case scenario, like I can just get, I, I can get these guys back on the team, but I want to try to do it as realistic as possible. You know, this, this series isn't as realistic as say like my main franchise with the St. Louis Sentinels, because it's more about the subscribers. Speaking of the subscribers, we are going to go into the first week of free agency. And you guys said in the Discord poll and also in the YouTube poll, I said, uh, if, you're, if your player hits free agency, do you want me to get you back on the original team or just let it, let you go where you go? And you guys said, let the uh, hands of fate decide where you go. So let's see uh, if a lot, if any, of our subscribers are in free agency. And, and look, if you guys really want me to get you back on the team that you started on, just tell me in the comments below and I will make sure that that happens but Yeezy Fuentes, uh from the Virginia Beach Blues, he's hitting free agency. Jax Vaden, of course. Jack Mavros, we just talked about that. Nico PD from the Salt Lake City Bisons, the halfback, who we had to beat them to get to the Super Bowl. And we did do that. So if Nico PD is in free agency, I'm, I mean, I would say, like, probably all the subscribers, really, right? So interesting. Maybe there's somebody that, that we can scoop up. Um, just kind of looking through skimming Mac Hayward is here austin gutierrez from the oilers is here yeah a lot of them st james you know what i'm picking up st james 100 percent the tight end from the san juan tigers because he's good he never played he never played ever like for whatever reason the tigers uh coach or offensive coordinator never put him out there so i want to see my man st james in a t-birds uniform and we're also not bringing back ricky seals jones either so uh, maybe he wants a mentor. Logan Thomas is here. Um, I'm going to start. I know I should just learn my lesson on the overpay, uh, the underpay from before. But I'm going to start out on a four-year, $32 million deal. And we'll do that to just kind of get the get the juices flowing, see what's going on, see what other teams are talking about. And hopefully we can scoop up St. James. But who else is here? I imagine most subscribers are probably here maybe not all of them i'm seeing a lot james briner from the lumberjacks is here uh who else anybody else maybe that's it okay so actually not as much as i thought i thought they would like all be in here but you know a good amount 
I would say, but not all of them. And let's go ahead and try to get back. Where's Jax Vaden? Where's Mr. Vaden? I really wish he wanted to be here, man. Uh, he still wants a pretty, pretty big cap hit as well. Um, yeah, you know, you got to do what you got to do. And if we eat up all of our cap, guess what? Madden 25 is going to be out before before the next season of the Madden 24 iteration of the SFL. I don't want to go $60 million. I mean, come on. We'll go $58 million. Even that, it's not really as strong as I would have hoped. Ah! Jack should be easy to get because I just tried to underpay him, which is why he, he didn't want to join. So I learned from my mistakes. We'll go three years, $11 million, and hopefully... We can bring back Jack. So right now we're targeting Jack's Vaden and we're in the lead for him. Jack Mavro is the only offer put out on him. And St. James has nine offers, but ours is the top. Now, what what does this team, what does the Thunderbirds team even need? That's the question. I know we lost Bobby Wagner. Let's take a quick look at our lineup and see what we really, because again, I, I still got to make sure the team is good, right? I mean, we're good at receiver. Don't need any help there. Maybe a right guard or a right tackle. I could take a look at that. Uh, tight end, going to be solid. Um, quarterback, obviously solid as well. And defensively, we need we could use a middle linebacker and a left outside linebacker. Although, Yaya Diaby did play really well. I got to be honest with you. Left end, maybe. So maybe some pieces on the D-line and the linebacker position. Uh, maybe that would be a smart thing to do for our team, the Thunderbirds. And I mean, with $6.14 million in cap room, this is about all we can do. So we're going to try to bring back Jax Vaden. We're going to try to bring back Jack Mavros. We're going to try to acquire St. James. And also Eric Kendricks would be a good signing as well. And I'll tell you what, since we don't got that much cap anyways, I'm going to just try to ensure that we get St. James, boosting it up a little bit more here. Just because he has nine teams that are interested in him. I mean, our cap is already pretty much relinquished anyways. So hopefully that will go ahead and lock him in. And I think these are some good pieces. You know, well, two of them were already on our team. So uh, let's go ahead and move forward. No, I know how to play the game, Madden. I'm sorry. Pressed the wrong button. Go ahead and move forward to the next eval period. See where these guys land if they made a decision. So they're all gone. Did they sign with us? Bye. Jack Svaden did, Jack Mavros did, St. James did, and Eric Kendricks did as well. All right, so added a new subscriber to the T-Birds, added Eric Kendricks to the T-Birds. Are any of these top players uh, subscribers off the board here? Yeezy is still a free agent. Okay, interesting. Nico Petey is still a free agent. Flash Parker goes to the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods. Okay. C-Ben goes to the Orlando Wizards to join Michael Briner and running back I am Al Musa. Was anybody else in here? Zachary Nolan, go, middle linebacker, goes to the Honolulu Red Dragons. I should have added him. What was I thinking? Well, whatever. We got. I probably couldn't have afforded him anyways. Uh, Mac Hayward's still here. Austin Gutierrez is still here. And it looks like that is about it. James Briner goes to our rival Brooklyn Nighthawks. Okay. So he goes from the Austin Lumberjacks, who are also in our division, to the Brooklyn Nighthawks, who are in our division as well. So he will still be a division foe, and uh, we'll still see him two times per year. Don't think anybody else is in here, so we will go ahead and sim to the end of the free agent period and see where everybody else landed. All right, the moment of truth. Where did everybody go? Yeezy Fuentes goes to the Melbourne Dreadnoughts, who is in our division. So he was on the blues. And again, guys, if you guys want to go back to your team, just let me know. I can make it easily happen. But this is kind of interesting because we have another subscriber on the Dreadnoughts, Alexander Kleblek, wide receiver. And we play them twice a year. They are in the AFC East. So I think that's kind of cool having two subscriber wide receivers on the same team that, you know, we're going to see every single year. Nico PD goes to the Aviators. They already have a running back, though. They have Aiden Leslie. So I'm not sure what the thought process is there. Darian Wolcott, running back from the Elks, goes to the Austin Lumberjacks. Lots of teams signing in our division. Cornerback Dior Love goes to the Aviators. Remember, they were the number one seed in the AFC East, and they got beat by the number six seed, Salt Lake City Bisons. So the Aviators should be a good team. See Ben, the corner, goes to the Wizards. Zachary Nolan goes to the uh, Red Dragons. Was there anybody else in here? Mac Hayward 
goes to the and Austin Gutierrez. So two, I, I don't know. It's going to be crazy next season. Two great running backs go to this was the best. We played them in the Super Bowl. The Voyagers, best team in the NFC and also in the entire SFL last season as well. So, uh, OK, is there anybody else on here? James Briner. We talked about him going to the Nighthawks. And I think that's it. I believe I don't think there's any more subscribers that yeah nobody would have been this low I don't make subscribers this low so the league definitely looks a little bit different and just go ahead and show real quick the uh I will show the entire league so that way if anybody wants to join you know you can see the teams here so in the NFC North we have the Louisville Desperados the Anchorage Snowhawks Paris Black Knights and the Omaha Pioneers in the NFC East, we have the San Antonio Voyagers, Chicago Elks, London Mounties, and Dublin Shamrocks. NFC South, we got the San Juan Tigers, Rio de Janeiro Redwoods, Virginia Beach Blues, and the Oklahoma City Antlers. And then in the NFC West, we have the Honolulu Dragons, the, uh, trying to remember some of these teams, Vancouver Huskies, Sacramento Sentinels, and the Portland Steamers. AFC side of things, we have the Canton Condors, Tokyo Golden Eagles, Columbus Caps and Montreal Monarchs, AFC East, which is my division. We have the Toronto Thunderbirds, Melbourne Dreadnoughts, Austin Lumberjacks, and the Brooklyn Nighthawks. AFC South, we have the St. Louis Bulls, Orlando Orbits, and the Memphis River Hogs, and then also the Oilers Nation, Houston Oilers. That was a fan favorite last year. And then rounding things out with the AFC West, we have the Albuquerque Armadillos, San Diego Aviators, Salt Lake City Bisons, and the Oakland Wizards. So that is the SFL. If you guys would like to join. And also, you know what? Let me show you uh, my sliders as well. Just because I talk about them a lot. But never really show them. And uh, it's everything's default 50. Except I have the interceptions turned down to 40. On myself and the CPU. So there's no unfair advantage there. Only reason I do that is because it's no secret. There's way too many picks in Madden. And I still even threw like 19 with Jordan Love last season. So both teams are both the uh, user and and the CPU are at 40 for interceptions. And then I got the punt power turned up to 70, which I just made that change because, you know, the punts I just felt like were uh, were kind of weak. So that's the league. If you guys would like to join, let Bam. me know. I'm just going to simulate the draft again. If this was a main franchise series, I would definitely uh, be doing it. A trade offer for St. James. No, I'm good. I got my man locked up. Go ahead and sim to the draft and then get to the preseason. Draft recap, though, let's just at least see how we did and see, you know, who were the strongest players in the draft. I mean, uh, okay, we picked up a cornerback, Matthew Winters, who was the 78 overall. That's pretty good. Max Richardson, not sure if I would have went tight end with my uh, second overall pick. I would have probably went offensive line or defensive line, but hey. It is what it is. And then we got Demetrius Givens. Third round pick was a free safety. We didn't really hit. I mean, our number one overall pick was good, but we didn't really hit too uh, too much on that draft. And as far as the uh, as a whole, the draft class as a whole didn't look that good. We got I mean, we got tied for the best player in the draft. That's pretty cool. But with the 78 overall being the highest, this was kind of a weak draft class. Not that it matters, because, again, this is not if you're looking for the realistic stuff. That's my main franchise series, which we will start one in Madden 25. I had a very long running one, if you don't know, in Madden 24, St. Louis Sentinels franchise. I go through all that stuff, all that main franchise content. This one is more interactive and mainly just about you guys, the subscribers. Not going to do the preseason games, but we'll highlight some people in training camp. You know, uh, obviously the subscribers just kind of get a look at them. We know that. All the subscribers on our team are very good, but let's see if maybe uh, Tubby, his his thing is he's just not very fast, so I'm not sure how well he'll do in this drill, although, hey, that was a pretty good start. It would be very nice to get some dev trait upgrades, right, for some of our from some of our subscriber players. I start them all out as star, as you guys know, so if you're joining the league, you go. will start Ready. out as star dev, and that's the issue right there, Tubby shoestring tackle, wow. Thought he was gone. But to get some uh, some subs up to Superstar, I mean, that would be pretty cool. And Tubby so far doing a good job. I hate these hate these routes, though. Can you truck somebody, Tubby? Come on. You're so big. That's what you do. Yeah, he was close, but uh, the, his the defender's cohort there was uh, and up, up, up. That's just me being an idiot. Tubby, I'm sorry. I'm letting you down, brother. 
I was so good at this drill with uh, our running hey, yeah. back on Sentinels franchise, hey, hey. Dudley Saxton. But he had 94 speed. Tubby's probably got like 94 break tackle, ready, but ready. speed is definitely not his strong suit. Maybe silver though. Can we at least get silver? Ah, uh, nope. I'm sorry, Tubby. I only got your bronze, but I mean, it was just kind of tough to run with you in that specific drill, but that's all right. That's not what Tubby does. We got Kareem Hunt on our team as well for, uh, you know, for that, that area of things. But let's go ahead and look at our newly acquired tight end St. James. So happy to finally get my man some stats because he sure was not getting them in San Juan. That much is for sure. On our team, though, he should get them no problem. And I'm pretty good at this drill, I would say. I mean, not the, you know, not the best. Ooh, this could be a 500, though. A 500. Come on, Jordan Love. Launch it. Launch it. Get it up there. Get it up there for 500. Bang! Get St. James there with the soft hands. We might get it again, too. Anytime I see the corner pressing up on me, probably going to be going for this 500. This one might not be it, though. No. Okay. Maybe I should just stick with uh, the 400s because... Those ones are much safer and trying to get uh, gold here to get my man potential dev upgrade. That would be awesome. And it's so much easier to hit these 400 routes. It's going to be close, but I th think we can do it. Ah, I'm greedy. I'm getting greedy. I know. I know. I shouldn't have went for that. I shouldn't have went for that. Come on, Jordan. Get it in there. Yeah, that's my bad. All right. Well, probably have to settle for 400. I mean, for uh, silver, but it's all right. Or maybe not even. Come on, St. James. Ow. I am uh, getting my goose cooked on these pregame training cam drills. I'm usually pretty good at them. I'll tell you one that I'm definitely not good at is the one that we're going to do next, which is the DB battle. Oh, my God. Yeah, we're going to use Jax Vaden. Hey, Jax, man, I know we just gave you a bag, brother. A big old contract extension. So hopefully you can earn it on this one. But... Fortunately, you got me behind the stick, so yeah, this is my number one most hated uh, practice, you know, training camp practice thing. I'm terrible at it. Never do good. Come on, Jax. In my defense, though, the receivers always seem to moss you in this one. I do not know why. Come on, get in there. Wow. I mean, the trick is you got to like just literally pass interference them and sometimes just not go for the pick. I know as as tempting as it can be sometimes. It's a little bit safer to go for the SWAT. We're at least going to get bronze. A little disappointed, though. No silver or gold trophy, uh, you know, medals in any of these. That's kind of unfortunate. Now, I usually get them, but hey, how about that? Silver for Jax. Here's one where I can guarantee you right now. I can't guarantee much in life other than death and taxes, but I can guarantee you that I will. I guess I shouldn't say that. I'm 96.84% positive that I'll get the gold in this one with uh, Silas Vaden, the trench battle, the long haul, because all you got to do is literally don't even worry about the swim moves, the club moves, nothing like that. Engage with the defender, get the multiplier, and then just disengage. And the uh, the uh, offensive linemen just kind of derp out, and it's really easy. Sometimes I even hit him with a little fancy spin move like that. You see, I see you with the, with the moves there, Silas. Okay, I like it. But yeah, this is my bread and butter. So maybe, oh, oh, come on, disengage, disengage, Silas. Should be able to get gold with this and maybe a dev trade upgrade. All right, that should be gold, which it is. Man, if we got Silas up to a superstar dev trade, that would be awesome. It's very rare. I've only had it happen one time, I think, and that was our QB JJ Ford in Sentinels franchise. Nope, not going to get it. Uh, but that is okay. Now, what can I do for... Can I do taste and tackle with our other D-tackle? Jay Monstro? No. Okay, there's only one, looks like, a defensive tackle drill that we can do. We can do wide receiver red zone attack with Mike Oxmall, though. And this one I'm okay with. It depends. Like, I'll show you guys. I'm sure... I mean, look, the Madden 24 cycle is pretty much dead. But it's pretty easy if they uh, press up on you. Yep. Well, I'm, I just super, I haven't done this in a long time, guys, so I, it, it'll be all right. But if they if they press up on you, that's the trick. Like, if they Ready? don't, a lot of times you can just go boop, and then sometimes you can get the four and the two. Now, this time we are now. getting pressed, so yeah, easy money, money in the bank. Shorty, what you drank? Might get gold with Mike on this one, too. All comes down Ready? to this, man. I should, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go for the safe completions here. We're going to get silver for sure. 
Not sure if we can get That's gold, ready. but we're about to find out. That would be awesome if we do. Come on, love. Get it in there. Ah, just barely. I missed like two passes. That first one really got me. But that's okay. That was still a pretty good drill from Mike Oxmall. And then last but not least, we will go to the punting drill. That's right, because we do got a punter on our team. And I don't typically, I don't care, I don't think I've done the coffin corner punt drill since Madden 24 came out. So this one could be a little ugly here. We'll see. Uh, not quite sure. It's a good kick, though. Did I aim it correctly? That's the question. We are going to probably get a touchback. Yeah, okay. But I need to uh, aim it a little bit more to the right, I guess. That looks good to me. Yeah, I have like zero practice doing this drill. I think that one should be good, though. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh, it's going to be close. Hey, look at that. That was right on the money. I like you with the good old accuracy there, Jack. And with the punt power getting turned up on the sliders, that should make punts a lot better. So I whiffed one, but we're still in good shape. That should be. That's a great punt right there. Look, okay, what did I say? That I don't have much practice in this? Yeah, you wouldn't be able to tell, huh? Now this one, let me go to the right, but we got the wind howling to the right too. So we'll see how far it carries this puppy. And that actually, okay. So maybe, <laughs> Mike, I'm not going to get gold probably because I screwed up a couple. But I am doing much better in this drill than I thought I would. That's for sure. See if we can get another. I mean, look at that. That is utter perfection. You can't do it any better than that. Coach, did you see Mike Oxmall out there this week? Start calling him Zay Jr. Because me and that dude are cut from the same cloth. Any specific area you want him to improve in? I mean, I would say just getting open. Nice to see a uh, you know, wide receiver spotlight mentorship scenario. And Zay Jones is a good one. Good mentor. Sure thing, Coach. Any specific type of routes. I would say the medium routes because that's usually if we're not hitting Mike on, you know, the little RPOs and the run after catch situations, he's probably going for a medium route and Mike does get a plus two to release and also a plus two to medium route running. That's that's huge. It's really big. He might have overtaken a uh, Marquez Valdez scaling as our number uh, three wide receiver. Now, a training camp standout. Is this a, sub a subscriber? Blah, blah, blah. Can't talk. Is this a subscriber player? Coach Silas Vaden has had a strong camp and has continued to build on that. Where has he improved most? I would say rushing the passer, man. He's definitely going to find himself in some of our pass rush packages. Yeah, all of them. And he's shown that he's improving and becoming a threat to get to the QB. So nice to see some subscribers getting some pregame scenarios. Silas Vaden gets plus three to power moves and finesse moves. That is wonderful and we got some upgrades here some final week of preseason so silas vaden speaking of which he has two upgrade points so we are gonna i'll probably split one we'll go one to speed rush and probably one to power uh let's look at his stats though as a matter of fact plus three to awareness is good but silas's ratings i mean he is a speed rusher so i guess we should probably just continue to pump the ratings he could use a little bit in block shedding though so i think i'm actually gonna go run stopper because we gotta we can't forget about the running game and hopefully we can get that block shedding up a little bit which we get oh, plus yeah. three that is incredible jack mavros our punter getting an upgrade as well and he's got 91 kick power and 92 kick accuracy so i guess the power is uh the way to go don't really get too many upgrades for punters and kickers i guess i could go in and i never messed with the uh the sliders the xp sliders at least not in this one so maybe that's something to think about doing but jacks vaden who just got the big big five-year contract extension he has an upgrade as well and he is a slot guy man coverage 85 zone 81 his press could be a little bit better and his play rec can't really do much for play rec um maybe i mean i guess slot that gives you the best upgrades anyways so it's kind of a no-brainer hoping to see a little bit in press he gets plus one to press and plus one to play rec which i was just talking about and a big plus three to man coverage as well okay st james looking forward to seeing this guy on the field because lord knows he didn't get on the field much last year he's a vertical threat tight ends it doesn't really matter i mean like they get so many you go vertical threat or possession i guess we'll go possession just because that's closer to the scheme fit but both of these i mean look we got like eight upgrades nine upgrades there and pretty much just everything across the board 
Very, very easy to upgrade tight ends in Madden, as I'm sure you guys know. And then last but not least, Mike Oxmall. So Mr. Oxmall here is a deep threat. And getting a look at his ratings, yeah, we'll probably just go. I mean, short route's pretty bad. But the only time we ever use him in those short routes, ah, let's go Playmaker. Playmaker, that's the scheme fit. That gets you probably the most upgrades as it is. And I'm not necessarily, you know, I'm not sure that Mike is just a deep threat guy. I think he's pretty vers versatile. So that'll get him plus two to medium route and short route. Juke move and ball carrier vision and also spin move too. Week one is here. Going to be playing the first week of the SFL in the next episode. Setting our season goal. I mean, it's got to be the Super Bowl, right? It's got to be back to back. What else are we suiting up and showing up for? We're not trying to fall short of that. And we got uh, the Vancouver Huskies and Patrick Mahomes as our first matchup here in season number two. Talk about our camp standout, though. I'm excited to see this uh, maybe a dev trait uh, journey upgrade here. Every year, there's players who ball out in the preseason that don't end up doing anything once the actual season starts. I think you're different, Mr. Vaden, but it's time to prove it. And Silas says, I've never been more ready, coach. I didn't put in all this work just to come up short. And I'm here to make plays and to help this team win. So what's that mean? Get two plus combined sacks and tackles for loss with Silas Vaden against the Huskies to continue his breakout. And that should be doable. But Patrick Mahomes is a tough, tough guy to bring down. And here real quick, guys, we'll take a look at the schedule here in week number one. So that way you can see, you know, I and hey, I'll have it in the discord, too. I'm going to add something in the discord that has uh, all the uh, I'll have top five season stats. I'll have team records. I'll have week one matchups, week two matchups, all that good stuff. So make sure to join the discord because you're not going to want to miss out on that. But we got the steamers at the Nighthawks. We got the Bulls at the Desperados. Elks at the River Hogs. Uh, Redwoods at the Caps. Antlers at the Mounties. Armadillos at the Orbits. Aviators at the Condors. Dreadnoughts at the Sentinels. Tigers at the Golden Eagles. Pioneers at the Dragons. Lumberjacks at the Wizards. Blues at Bisons. Voyagers at Oilers. Shamrocks at Monarchs. Black Knights at Snowhawks. And then... We are on Thursday night football. Uh, Huskies coming down to Thunderbirds Field. Going to be a tough one there. But I am so excited, guys. Season number two going to be dropping here next episode. Again, join the Discord. Like the video. Subscribe. If you're not, I'm really close to 1,000 subscribers. And I will do an NFL jersey giveaway once I hit that milestone. So please help me get there. And, of course, if you want to join the league, comment down below. And I will add you in the next episode. But... That is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.